Good morning children. Yesterday we have already started the discussion with respect to the competitive part, isn't it? Until then we were discussed about the artificial hybridization. Today we will continue the competitive part, the after that one, the double fertilization topic. Okay? Yeah. So the first question. Which of the following is an exclusive feature of angiosperms? Okay. This. See there are four options they were given. Out of this one, which is the best option you should identify? In exams also, you should identify the most appropriate answer. Sometimes they may look like similar, but we should identify exact and most appropriate. To identify the answer for this question, first of all, we should know the meaning of double fertilization. Okay? Yeah. Let me to explain briefly. First of all, what is double fertilization? The fusion of two male gametes with two different components of the embryo sac, namely egg cell and the secondary nucleus, is called double fertilization. Isn't it? Yeah. So what will happen during double fertilization? The one of the male gamete, that is N, fuses with the egg cell N, is called syngamy. This results in the formation of the diploid cell called zygote. Then what about the other one? The other male gamete N fuses with secondary nucleus 2N in the central cell to form a triploid primary endosperm that is PEN. Okay? As this involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei, it is termed as a triple fusion. Got it? Now, you can identify the answer which is the right one yes that is triploid endosperm or we can also say triploid that is PEN then double fertilization because the process the whole process of the fertilization that involves both syndemy and the triple fusion so that's why it is also known as double fertilization I think it's clear. Then, which is the right answer? Option D is the right answer for the first question. Is it clear? Yes. Next question. So, this question is also related to the topic or the logic distractor, double fertilization only. The central cell after triple fusion becomes. So, that means we should identify the fate of the central cell after the triple fusion. There is a post fertilization event which comes under the post fertilization. Isn't it? Yeah. The central cell after the triple fusion becomes primary endosperm cell that is PEC and develops into endosperm while the zygote develops into an embryo. Isn't it? Now you can identify which is the right answer. Yes. Option B is the right answer. Got it? Yes. The next question. This is also related to the double fertilization topic only. After double fertilization, a mature ovule would have what it will be having. Isn't it? So that means, so post fertilization events, this is comes under the post fertilization events means the fertilized embryo sac. If you observe the fertilized embryo sac in the diagram you can identify it will be containing one diploid cell that means the zygote that is 2N and one triploid cell that is primary endosperm cell PEC which is consisting of the primary endosperm nucleus that is 3N ok so 2N diploid 3N means triploid is it clear now you can identify answer which is the right one yes option B is the right answer ok yes 
next question so this question is also related to the double fertilization only note down now let me to read the question primary endosperm nucleus that is PEN is formed by the fusion of habitable forms isn't it just now earlier question when we are discussing about the earlier question I told you so during double fertilization one of the male gametes of fuses with the egg nucleus that is nothing but X L N. So this is called syngeny while the other male gamete which that is N which fuses with secondary nucleus to N that is a central cell to form a triploid primary endosperm isn't it now which is the right answer option C that is two polar nuclei which is present at the center of the I mean embryo sac and one male gamete isn't it so which is a fused together form that is nothing but triple fusion is it clear yes now you can identify it you see it's easy it's the right option option C correct the next question so this question is also related to the I mean double fertilization only see here this question no need of in-depth knowledge it requires only a common sense see generally you know where we are discussing in the last year you know our body will be consisting of two type of the cells isn't isn't it that is the germ cells they are nothing but reproductive cells and another one is yes body forming cells they are nothing but yes vegetative cells like that in plants also okay so there are two types of the cells which is present the vegetative cells and generative cells vegetative cells generally they are containing 2n that is a ploidy the chromosomal number 2n isn't it the generative cell they are nothing but sex cells okay so they are containing n isn't it yeah so if you know this uh, I mean concept you can identify easily so let me to read this question if the cells of the new cells in the angiosperm will contain 24 chromosome that means the cells containing the nothing but the chromosomal number 24 which is present in the vegetative cells what will be the number of chromosomes in the endosperm of a self pollinated flower so just now I told you so the whatever the central cell containing polar nucleus it is a containing to n when it will fuses with the n what it will happens triploid the common sense is 24 if it is 2n means n is 12 so triploid means n n n that is 12 3 is a 36 okay so which is the right answer yes 36 is the right answer the chromosomal number which is present in endosperm that is triploid isn't it yeah next question see they are given the diagram given below is the structure of fertilized embryo sac we should label a to e okay so first of all i yesterday also i told you without going towards the that means what are they given the options just label it the a is nothing but degenerating synergies b is nothing but zygote then c is the primary endosperm cell that is pec d is primary endosperm nucleus that is 3n pen then e degenerating anticodal cells now you can identify yes option a is the right answer 
got it yeah it's clear it's very easy to identify also did you got it am i correct yes the next question the seventh one see this topic i mean the seventh question is related to the the post fertilization events that to specifically formation of endosperm that is endosperm development liquid endosperm see while we are discussing about the endosperm i told no in the most common endosperm development pn undergoes successive nuclear division to give rise to free nuclei okay this kind of endosperm is called free nuclear endosperm subsequently the cell wall formation occurs and the endosperm becomes cellular this is called cellular endosperm here they were given the question the liquid endosperm the liquid endosperm is present in tender coconut or we can also say the coconut the coconut water is the best example for free nuclear endosperm and what about that copra or we can also say kernel okay that white kernel of the coconut is the example for yes that is cellular endosperm did you work it i think it's clear no need of confusion the next question so this is also related to the the topic post fertilization that is endosperm development endosperm becomes cellular due to the formation of as i said just now the cell wall okay so while the deposition going on okay subsequently the cell wall formation occurs and the endosperm becomes a cellular so this is called a cellular endosperm got it yeah and the ninth question so this is also it is related to the topic the post fertilization embryo development select the false statements so there are four statements they were given which is related to the yes that is formation of embryo okay so we should identify the false statement out of these four statements one statement is a false remaining three statements are true so let me to read the first statement in angiosperms embryo develops at micropylar end of the embryo sac that is true only the b next one most zygotes divide only after the formation of some endosperm so this is also true only then third statement cotyledon of grass family is called scutellum it's correct d in monocots and dicots embryogeny and seeds differ greatly no so this is false almost all in monocots and dicots embryogeny and seeds they are not that much diverse almost all they are similar but only during formation of cotyledons the monocots will give rise to the single cotyledon and dicots will give rise to two cotyledons the remaining the embryogeny these are all will be similar isn't it so that's why option d is the false statement remaining three is true you do got it yeah the next question the post fertilization this is also question related to the embryo development only the correct sequence of embryonic development in angiosperm is you know um, when we are discussing about the structure that is the stages in the embryo development uh, especially in dicot just like call or if you have in textbook you just open and see first we can identify zygote diagram isn't it then the two cell stage then what it will be that's pro embryo stage then it will be turns into the globular embryo stage then after heart shaped heart shaped embryo it will be consisting of suspensor i hope you can remember then the last one the mature embryo 
isn't it? It will be containing the suspensor, radical, cotyledons and plumule. Yeah. So which is the correct sequence now? Option A. Option A is the right answer with respect to the that is stages in embryo development especially in dicots we can identify all these stages clearly next question observe the diagram yes what is this actually so this is the diagrammatic representation of ls of an embryo of grass or we can also say ls of an embryo of monocotyledon you can just label it without going towards the what are the options what is this A? A is nothing but scutellum then B is coleoptile C shoot apex D is epiplast what about E? E is radical F is a root cap and G is colorizer isn't it now let me to move towards options which is the right option yes option d is the right answer you can just check it out with the diagram the diagram which is present in your notes also and textbook also you can just check it out it's clear is it correct yes this question is related to the that is LS of an embryo of grass or we can also say LS of an embryo of monocotyledonous embryo the next question the twelfth one so this is related to the topic or logic distractor the post fertilization seed from ovule or we can also say the formation of seeds so let me to read the question in angiosperm dash is the final product of sexual reproduction yes seed isn't it seed is a the post fertilization product of ovule or seed is a fertilized ovule also isn't it yeah so it is a final product of sexual reproduction okay yes next question so this is also I mean the 13 question is also related to the same topic the post fertilization the seed from ovules yeah see uh, let me to explain briefly a uh, little about the the mature seeds the classification of the seeds so that you can easily identify the answer so when we are discussing about the types of the seeds the seeds are of two types isn't it we were discussed earlier they are nothing but albuminous seeds and exalbuminous albuminous means nothing but the endospermic seeds isn't it the seeds retain a part of endosperm as it is not completely used during embryogenesis but remaining endosperm is utilized during seed germination do you remember example the wheat maize barley castor sunflower what about the ex albuminous the non endospermic seeds the seeds have no residual endosperm as it is completely consumed or utilized during embryogenesis we can give examples pea groundnut and beans or we can also say pulses isn't it now you can identify the answer which is the right answer non albuminous yes option a is the right answer p groundnut and beans okay the next question it is also related to the same topic post fertilization it's from ovary. Occasionally, in some seeds such as black pepper and baked, remnants of mucilage are also persistent. This 
residual persistent nucellus is also called yes it's easy peristom isn't it occasionally it will happen yeah what will happen the residual that means it is also again so you just uh, i hope you can remember the topic the developmental stages in the earlier isn't it the nucellus is a nutritive tissue during the that means in the beginning stage actually but it will be remained as it is okay so that's why so this is one more question also sometimes they can ask what is perisperm okay so then you should identify answer and you can write also yes the next question the inability of a seed to germinate can be called as so that is nothing but dormant seed okay so i told no in the earlier the dormancy it is because of the you name know, of the hormone dormin the inability okay inability of the seed to germinate can be called why actually what will happens as the seed matures its water content is reduced up to 15 to 25% as well as the metabolic activity and the that means embryo may enter into a, a state of inactivity is also called dormancy isn't it so and when the seed gets favorable conditions like adequate moisture oxygen and suitable temperature it germinates isn't it so until then it will be in the state of dormancy is it clear yes the next question the post fertilization the formation of seed from ovules so this is i told you so that means when we are discussing about the advantages of the seeds in angiosperms there are several records okay so there are several records of a very old edible seeds the oldest is that of dash excavated from that dash the seed germinated and flowered after an estimated period of the dash years of dormancy that is nothing but lupinus arcticus it is excavated from arcticic tundra isn't it then it's about how many years estimated okay it is estimated record of 10000 years of dormancy isn't it yeah so this is Uh, when we are discussing about the advantages of seeds we were discussed earlier the next question yeah again a recent record of dash old viable series obtained from the date palm scientifically called as dash discovered during the archaeological excavation at the king that is herods palace near the dead sea so this is also the same topic it is related to the advantages of the seeds in the angiosperms so it's about that is nothing but a recent record of 2000 years old viable seed is of the dead palm actually and the botanical name phoenix dactylifera okay Phoenix dactylifera discovered during the archaeological excavation at King Herod's Palace near Dead Sea. Is it clear? Yes. The next question. See, this question is related to the same, the post-fertilization events, the formation of seed and ovule. Here it's also, as I said, just observe the structure of a maize. but the thing is here the structure of a typical monocot seed is given observe this and you should select the false statement okay so before we are going towards the statements let me to tell you what are the labels comes here a 
A label is nothing but pericarp. B is nothing but endosperm. C is nothing but scutellum. Then D is nothing but polyptile. E is nothing but plumule. F it is nothing but radical. And the G is nothing but colorizer. Okay. Now just move towards the statements. Here what they whatever they are given. G is radical and it becomes a rotate. See here what they are actually given. We should identify select the false statement. The thing is actually whatever they are given okay yes G what is G G is nothing but polarizer isn't it yes which one will become actually radical F isn't it yeah so that's right so option A is the right option but false statement the next question so this is related to the topic the post fertilization fruit and ovary after fertilization pericarp is derived from walls of the ovary okay so you know very well that while we are discussing about the fruit okay we will discuss the fruit is a post fertilization product of the ovary or fruit is a ripened ovary the ovary wall develops into the fruit wall called pericarp that consists of three layers such as outer epicarp, middle mesocarp and in the endocarp. Here what they are given after fertilization pericarp is derived from walls of ovary. Okay. Yes. The next question. The post fertilization same this is also related to the topic the fruit which develop from the region other than the ovary is called that is nothing but yes pseudocarp okay the fruit that develop from the thalamus or other than the ovary is called false fruits or pseudocarp you know very well that the best examples cashew apple and strawberry. What about the true fruits? The fruits that develops from ovary is called true fruits. We can give examples mango, lemon, pea, etc. Isn't it? Okay. Pseudo means false. Okay. See again here only the example for plants with pseudocarp apple, strawberry and cashew. Why? Because these fruits that are from thalamus. Okay. Not from the ovary. Okay. The next question. It is also related to the same topic. The post fertilization. The fruit from ovary. Development of fruits with fertilization is called yes that is nothing but parthenocarpy isn't it yeah in a few plant species the ovary develops into fruit without fertilization such fruit is called parthenocarpic fruits they are also commonly known as seedless fruits natural example banana okay artificial we can give the seedless grapes okay Water we generally use the terminology seedless fruits. Okay, they are nothing but parthenocarpic fruits. Phenomena is actually parthenogenesis. Okay. This is the question number 23 is related to the last topic, the apomixis and polyembryon. Okay. A few flowering plants such as some species of Astraceae 
and grasses have evolved a, a special mechanism to produce seeds without fertilization. This is actually a definition for apomixis, isn't it? Correct. We can also give one line statement the formation of seeds without fertilization is termed as apomixis. The best example the species of astrocy and grasses. Okay. So actually the reason or we can also say the importance of apomixis. The apomixis is a form of asexual reproduction that mimics sexual reproduction. Isn't it? Yes. The next question Occurrence of more than one embryo. In a seed is referred to as dash and it is commonly seen in dash. So, this question is related to the polyembryony. Okay, what is polyembryony? The presence of more than one embryo in a seed is called polyembryony. The best example we can give citrus and mango. The botanical name of the mango, Mangifera indica. Did you got it? Yes. So this is another question. In case of polyembryony in citrus and mango, which cells undergo division to form embryos? Yes, which is that one? Yes, they are nothing but new cellular cells. Okay, remember, so citrus and mango is quite, I mean, the best examples. The more often, as in many citrus and mango varieties, some of the new cellular cells surrounding the embryo cell. Let's start dividing proteo into the embryo cell and develops into embryos. Isn't it? In such species, each one will contain many embryos. So this phenomena is also called polyembryony. I hope you can remember so in a easiest manner and easiest way. Okay. So I am actually, so these are all the, some of the questions what I have discussed till now. So these are all the questions which includes and uh, I mean related to the almost all, all the topics we were covered till now. So let me to uh, stop here the competitive class. In next class we will start the, the next chapter. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice day.